Hello everyone, I'm Pat and welcome to another video. Today I am back on the couch and I want to talk to you about singing harmonies. Maybe you're in a choir or in a band, maybe you play an instrument and sometimes you want to accompany your lead singer. Well, I've got a couple tips for you that will definitely help you get better at it. Let's do this. Number one, know your basic music theory. If you're going to start singing harmonies, you better understand what you're doing and what you're singing in relation to the lead part that's being sung. And knowing your basic theory is a big part of understanding what's going on. Basically, anytime you've got a lead going and you sing over or below that, you're singing harmony and if you don't really know what you're doing or where to go, you're going to be in trouble. And I know that if you play guitar, bass, drums or anything like that, you can sort of get away with not really knowing much about music theory. If you don't know anything about intervals or anything like that, but you know your chord shapes, you can be a guitarist. And you can be a drummer without ever really having to think about notes. But if you want to do a good job at singing harmonies, you better have a good understanding of basic music theory. So scales and intervals and chords and all that stuff. If you know that the song's in A major and you know the chord progression, well then you look at the lead, you can analyze it and sort of see what you can sing based on the form of the song. So let's say you play bass in a cover band and during rehearsal the lead singer asks you to harmonize a third above, well then you'll know what to do if your basic music theory is on point. So open up the Beato book and start reading. Number two, learn the piece of music or song through and through. Now that you've mastered your basic music theory, I recommend analyzing the songs that you play and really learning as much as you can about the songs that you play. It doesn't matter if you play your own songs, covers, if you play your bandmates songs, you should really understand the chord progressions and how the vocal melodies fit into that chord progression. If you look at the melodic line that the vocals are singing based on the chords that are being played, well, you'll figure out by knowing what chords you're playing on top of the note, which other notes can be sung. For example, if you're on a C chord and the singer is playing an E, well, you can sing a C, you can sing a G because that's the C major chord. You can also explore and go sing other notes and see what happens in relation to the lead singing. That's what's so cool about harmonies is that you don't have to follow the chord structure all the time. You can play around and explore and see what interesting things you can come up with in relation to the lead part that's being sung. But I think this all starts with having a deep understanding of the piece of music you are playing. Number three, make sure that you know your own range. You should really spend some time figuring out your own vocal range and your physical limitations. When I've been singing for about 30 to 40 minutes, I know that I can't reach some of the lower notes I can reach when I've just finished warming up. I know that I can reach a high B, but I can't stay there for very long notes before passing out. You should really do a proper warm up and really test your own vocal range without hurting yourself and finding out what your limitations and capacities are. That'll really help if you want to join a choir or vocal group. You can say, hey, I'm an alto and you'll have an easier time being placed in an appropriate section for your vocal range. If you're in a cover band or something like that and you start singing harmonies, some parts you can say, well, that's a little bit out of my range. Maybe I can sing the harmony under or maybe everybody could transpose the whole song so that I can sing my harmony part because that makes sense, right? I say that because singers actually do that sometimes. If you play in a cover band and the original song is too high for the singer's range, the whole band has to transpose the song for the lead singer to sing properly. But if you sing back vocals, I really don't recommend asking that of the whole band. Instead, you should know your range and sing what you can and not sing what you can't. Look at Ringo from the Beatles. He had a one octave range, he owned it, and Octopus's Garden is a great song. So know your own range. Number four, practice. Tip number three sort of falls into that, so it's important that I think we dedicate a whole tip to practicing. I think the best way to get comfortable with singing harmonies is to record yourself. So fire up your DAW and start recording a lead vocal. It can be something you wrote or it could be anything really. Then once you're done doing that, duplicate your track and sing a harmony part. You can try loads of things. You can sing a third above, a fourth below, a fifth above. You can sing an octave above or below. Use your range and use your different types of voices like your chest voice or your head voice and experiment. Once you feel like you're done recording, listen to what you've done, see what works and see what doesn't. And then you should practice and just keep going until you feel like you have something that really works. If you want to approach it another way, you can play or program chords on a piano or something like that, sing a melody over that, and then try singing harmonies above or below what you've previously sung. Once you listen to that, you'll instantly see what works and what doesn't in relation to the chords that you were playing on the piano. And then I really think you should challenge that. Try recording something that really doesn't work so you understand what does and what doesn't, and eventually you'll develop your own techniques and your own secret sauce to singing harmonies. So spending time in Logic or Pro Tools 
and practicing the art of singing harmonies is one of the best ways to get better at it. But if you want to practice with other people, that's also a very smart thing to do. Again, if you're in a choir, you could call people in your section and practice your parts. Or you could also call one person in every section and then practice the parts as a small ensemble. If you're in a band or something like that, maybe spend some extra time before or after rehearsals with the lead singer or anybody else who sings harmonies to really practice them. There's really no way around it. In this case, practice makes perfect. Number five, get some help. There are a ton of people out there that are eager to teach. Look at me, I just started a YouTube channel because I want to teach what I know to fellow musicians. And I'm sure that if you're in college or something like that, there's a bunch of people who are looking to teach and I'm sure there are singers in the music departments who are looking for students. And getting a real singing teacher, also called a vocal coach, is the best thing to do to start singing. And if you're in a band, and I'm in a band so I can relate to that, don't go thinking that you're too cool or that getting a vocal coach is not metal enough. If you want to be good at what you do, get a vocal coach. There's plenty of people out there who are amazing teachers who will help you with your voice. So if you want to start singing harmonies, consider getting help, getting a vocal coach, or just keep watching my stuff. On that note, you should definitely stay tuned for the upcoming deep dive on vocal harmonies. Recording vocals is probably my favorite thing to do, so there is definitely going to be more content on the matter, from really basic stuff to more advanced videos. But that is all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, you can go ahead and do the old LCS. If you really want to support me, you can go to my brand new Patreon page and maybe become my first patron. If you want super in-depth stuff, you can subscribe to my podcast, Pat Flanagan's Jam Space. It's on Anchor and Apple Podcasts. You can go to anchor.fm slash Pat Flanagan. All the links are down below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Now go practice. <laughs>